Ash, as usual, located us at a precise location which enabled us to locate and prove the new axis of the Earth and how it spells out all nations will be totally devastated unless they seek the Lord and as scripture predicts every knee shall bow to the returned Jesus Brian Leonard go lightly Marshall May 17 1942 a church filled with parishioners was detonated by the powers that be in England carried out by Churchill ordered by the Zionists above him it was a Sunday there's no way the blame on Germany holds water as the German Germans were anti-Zionist Khazar, not anti-Christians. Many had relatives of German stock living in this area, being closest point to immigrating from Europe at Dover. Officially, the church, simply named Christ, not the Church of Christ, was destroyed by the enemy. German Christians alleged to have hit the church during a Sunday service. Impossible. We had been to Glastonbury Tor, being St. Michael's Church. Likewise, the tower, St. Michael's Tower, remained after the church was destroyed. I have calculated the time between myself and the church sacrifice of parishioners. 1.65 years before I was reborn. This number is 86 weeks and 2 days. We have 1654 and 862. Greek 862, incorruptible, immortal. Hebrew 862, offset in a building, a gallery. From 5423, to tear off, break off, burst, draw away, lift up, pluck away, off, pull up, root out. The gallery is the area where church members sit, and indeed it was totally destroyed, but no damage to the tower. Obviously a controlled detonation. The tower had to stay across the road is an altar. 165 in Greek eon from the same as 104 properly and age by extension perpetuity. Also by implication the world, especially a messianic period. Age, course, eternal, forevermore, in ever beginning of while the world began without end. Compare 5550. Five, five, Hebrew 165, where I will be where I will be. Now, as you are aware, we were on Glastonbury Tor and St. Michael's Church. The tower remains and is the same as the one in the photo. The next slide continues the coincidences with the name Gardner seen here on the cornerstone. My conception, of course, was on Gardner's Road, Rosebury, Australia. Down in the bottom left there, J. Gardner. On the top of the tower, note the four horns, which represent the four horns of the sacrificial altar. Moses would dab blood of the sacrifice on each of the horns. Time on the clock here is 10 a.m. The next shot, a building between our Hotel Southcliffe, Folkestone, and the Christ Tower, is a square building, yellow stone with four horns, and a pyramid in the centre, an obvious architectural statement by the Freemason designers, that is Lucifer, Old Testament God of hate and death, Torah, Talmud, Khazar, Zionism, the world's problem today. You must remember the Balfour Agreement dated November the 2nd, 1917, between Lord Balfour and Lord Rothschild, it's all Talmud, promising to finance via worthless paper bonds backed by Federal Reserve, worthless USA paper currency owned by the Zionists as of 1913 and so bringing the USA into the war and defeating another Christian nation, which was Germany. Exodus 29.12 And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. The next shot I have filled the top of the Methodist church with blood as per the Torah instructed by Moses, which of course is absolute insanity. as Lucifer is. In the centre of the church roof is the pyramid, the altar to the Lord, Isaiah 19, verses 19 to 20. Now, after the end of the War of Independence, 
General Cornwallis for England met with General George Washington. In the meeting, Washington was told that within 200 years, America would seem to be the bastion of freedom, preaching from the Jewish Zionist Talmud Bible. And it was only seeming because, in fact, America is a prison. Washington thought he won the war against the English, but it was all set up. This is how long it has been planned. The book written by an eyewitness, Regions of Satan, Jonathan Williams. It's actually Legions of Satan, wasn't it, the book? Mm -hmm. The movie, the, the, the YouTube mm -hmm. that the guy did, it was Regions of Satan, but Jonathan Williams wrote the book Legions of Satan. Here's the Holy Bible, the great light in masonry, all to do with Lucifer, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, containing the Old and New Testaments according to the authorised or King James Version, helps to the Masonic student to be preached in all the churches somewhere else that it says. This is what controls. Since 2011, with the solar system crossing the Milky Way galaxy equator, we're back where creation took place. Your Bible, Lucifer's Torah of death and hate and controllers of all communication, churches and governments, you will not be told truth, period. Now we've been led by divine inspiration, Asher's doing, to find this location. Now there is only one place on the earth you will see the sunrise at a low angle to the horizon to then pass almost directly overhead at noon, then move west, turning east then set at a slight angle, moving from west to east. From our window, a church tower remains. It's simply named one word, Christ. A Methodist church directly south, built in the shape of a Torah, sacrificial altar across the road. The new earth axis due to a new body in our solar system, and we've taken videos from Nehemiah, Antarctic Station, everybody's seen all that comes out of there. Its effect has shifted the earth axis to near Margate. This means the Earth axis is now slightly north of Folkestone, close to Hearn Bay, 36 kilometres north. Here it is here. This is measuring from the church tower, the Christ Tower. In the next few slides I will show our perspective in Folkestone. The Earth rotates towards the east and the sunrise is in the east, but at sunset because we are so close to the new axis point, the sun being stationary, we rotate under it and the sun appears to set from west to east as our sight line is only 36 kilometres from the axis. In Antarctica, under the normal summer conditions of the past, the sun will skim the horizon at the South Pole. Here is the new round circle in the center being the new location of the axis and our sight line. This is a view above the new North Pole and causes the sun to appear to set moving from west to east. Black line sun path east then south then west in our sight line. The sun follows the black line, rise east, move south then west and finally set eastward caused by the axis point of rotation only 36 kilometers north of us at the church tower in Folkestone. Now here are some photographs that are taken at three, two minutes and 11 seconds past three on the left descending in five minutes and 34 seconds to 3.07.45 the sun west of the hotel. It has swung around since it was south of the hotel at 1.16 directly above. In the next slide center one is where it's directly above, then at 3.07 swung around coming down, swung around the south heading west moving toward the east, left to right. Now nine jets flew over the hotel at low altitude far to the east turning north and released colored smoke red white and blue, something to do with an air show that was in this uh, on this weekend. Moments before they flew so low over the hotel it brought dust up off the ground. As I was downstairs when it all started, everybody's outside ooing and ahhing, I thought what a dreadful sound. 
There's the bottom right photograph there taken at 134.16. It's five degrees off due south, westward, moving west, ward, south side of the hotel. My people watching this are familiar with Matthew 1.23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 1694 is Emmanuel, a name of Christ. The value of the verse is 8880 in Greek gematria for this verse, and so we put it together. We have the church simply named Christ, and we have the sacrifice of this destroyed gallery. We have the Moses Old Testament sacrifice building altar and the pyramid. And that's the measurement back to St. Michael's mm. in Australia, 1694, the convent that it went to, right there? Mm. Mm. The school, St. Michael's, convent. St. Michael's convent. God with us, Matthew 1, 23. The distance from the Christ Tower to where I went to school, St. Michael's College, is 16,940 kilometres. The distance from Christ Tower to Michael's church tower on Glastonbury Tor is 145.9 nautical miles. Now these are all distances as the crow flies. Greek dictionary 1459 is to leave behind in some place, that is let remain over leave. And of course both towers were left over after churches were destroyed. In miles it is 168th, and of course that alludes to the 168th day of the year, which is June the 17th, 2 BC, when I, Jesus was born. Hebrew 168 from 166, a tent, tabernacle, tent, time or past and future as well, eternal, forever, everlasting, world began. In kilometers, it's 270 in Greek, is reap down same together of course both towers they're the same together 270 a primitive root to seize be affrighted catch lay take or take possession so the altar next to the Christ tower has been taken over as was St Michael's tower church on the tour and both faced massive persecution Churches throughout the world do not have an altar on top of the towers, nor are churches shaped like an altar for sacrifice with four horns. So when we see one with a pyramid on the top, then these are for a reason. Churches universally have a name like St. Mary's or St. Benedict or St. John the Baptist or whatever. Not just one word, Christ. In the next slide, horizontal at the base of the four horns are gargoyles, these demonic effigies are all part of the demonization of the Christian world by the Zionists and Talmud influence, all coming out of Egypt. Each year, Europe and North America are tilted at 23.4 degrees towards the sun. At a distance of 94 plus million miles on July the 4th each year, the distance from the sun reduces the heat and light to moderate living levels. Australia and South America being tilted away from the sun experiences winter. Europe and North America on January the 4th each year at 92 million miles is tilted away from the sun. Being closer, if it were not tilted away, it would be a dust bowl and no life would survive. But now, with the North Pole being in the south of England near Margate it means the tilt is no longer and this is a problem. As for Australia and South America on the bottom of the earth and as the sun is also above the earth equator experiences summer and Europe and North America experience cold winters but now the North Pole is in England near Margate and as such 
will heat up and all life will be in extreme danger by January 2014. The new North Pole is 4178 kilometres shift from the former North Pole southward. This is caused by a large planet near Antarctica. Its massive weight and North and South Poles have locked onto the South Pole, pulling our South Pole towards its North Pole, shifting the Earth axis. The New South Pole is between three massive land masses, South America, South Africa and Antarctica. This planet is part of the return solar system's 3600 year cycle. In addition, there is a second sun and this has been reported across Europe and the USA for months. There are several things that the people of the Earth must do to survive extinction, and going underground is not an option. I remind you the two CIA tunnels that were pressurised to 19.7 atmospheres, an atmosphere is 14.5 pounds per square inch. The doors blew out and everything in them blew apart, and as everything is porous, a rock became pressurised. But as the pressure dropped, when the doors blew out, everything was ground to dust. Yesterday we drove to Margate and the chemtrails covered the sky. We waited for the winds off the North Sea to clear for a photo. The time of our observation was after 8pm. The sun was higher in the sky than here in Folkestone. At the same time the sun is nearing the horizon. This is because we are south of the axis of the Earth by 25 miles or so in Margate in on the access point. The bottom date there is saying access today June 8th 2002. That's because Yar has his uh, computer set for 2002 to overcome an anomaly in his computer that starts going crazy. Uh, so he bypasses it by setting the year 11 years behind what it really is. You can see the date of creation. We took several shots after driving the car towards the sun, the GPS set to follow our track or direction, and then we were able to determine precisely where the sun is in relation to the United Kingdom. Now, this shot out the window is from June the 5th, Folkestone. So we were, Folkestone is 25 miles south of the new axis at uh, Margate. Actually, Margate is near it. It's, it's in an area called Hearn Bay. Note the angle of the sun moving from west to east. This window is facing north and the sun is moving left to right, so it's moving west to east. Now back at, um, this is in Margate before we drove back to Hearn Bay. Note the street lamp shows the angle compared to Folkestone, setting at the same time 25 miles south. So this was about 50 minutes before the official sunset. It might have been a bit longer than that, the, um, a bit more than 50 minutes that that time there, 8.15 was around about the time that we left, so I think this is actually taken before, but it very high in the sky, you know, we're looking pretty much directly overhead, and uh, we first noticed that driving, it was the sun's rays pouring through the clouds because it's so chemtrailed, and this is why they're doing it, they are covering up where the sun is at all times. The sun is moving west to east and is not descending toward the horizon and continues eastward as we are sitting on the new pole axis. The sun is skimming the horizon above massive chemtrail cover. Here it is again um, at the time back in Folkestone what it looks like as it is setting. Still this is uh, before Folkestone sets around 9.02. 9.02. I think 9.05 was the uh, official time for yesterday. Here we are during the day back at Folkestone. 
Note the angle of the sun almost directly overhead. This is looking due south. Angle of the sun on the street lamp taken south from the hotel. The sun moving to the west. So it's coming around. It's like an elliptic. Of course, June the 9th is the beginning of lunation numbered 1119. Brings us to the Revelation, chapter 11, verse 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail. And for the last shot in this PowerPoint, going back to May the 31st, no shadows as we're climbing up to St. Michael's Tower on the Glastonbury Tour. No shadows anywhere. So, not looking good, not looking good I at all. Another point to all. mention is the distance from where I was born to where the access point is on the tip. Yes. Of where we went near Hearn Bay. Hearn Bay mm. is nine one three one point zero six nautical miles. The width of the pyramid in pyramid Manchester. Right. Yes, that's that number nine one three one point zero six. And from there. Yes. To the centre of Glastonbury. Right. The oh no, it was uh, Stonehenge. 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 Centre of the Stonehenge was two one two point seven. Two one point. Yeah. Two one two. Point seven. Point 0.7 kilometers. Okay, so you've got the first chronic uh, first yeah, yeah, first chronicle. yeah, first chronicles five thirteen, and the base of the pyramid in mm. inches. Perfect. So it is total perfection. It's just about a wrap. So that's it. Not a happy, not a happy at all. And there's uh, uh, there's only one thing that's going to save. Anybody, isn't it? Yep, Melanie. That's it. All uh, good for our saints. For anybody else, sir? Not looking good at all. But we are known here, aren't we? Yes, we, we arrive. Uh, People bowing at me. Y yes. <laughs> Uh, we arrived back at the hotel, and there's a group outside, and there's a woman talking, and, and, and they were watching us come up the path. One, the younger one sitting down didn't take her eyes from us and then uh, the older one said something like good afternoon she said uh, your majesty and your grace and bowed her head mm. <laughs> anyway all good for the saints <laughs>